a $70,000 $5 paper banknote. Let's take a good look at the paper banknotes and get right into it. These $5 paper banknotes were produced from 1967 through until 1991, which was the start of the last run of these notes. And it features Caroline Chisholm. We'll look at a bit more detail as to why she's on the notes right there. And also Joseph Banks on the banknote. Let's get into some values. For values, I like to use this book, the Renix Australian Coin and Banknote Values book. This is the 32nd edition. There's a number of editions beforehand, which are perfectly fine too, uh, but just probably won't have the latest issue banknotes in the, the more um, previous issues. So then you flick through to the $5 banknotes page, and these are where the paper banknotes are. So all of these figures here are values for these notes in different conditions, but also different uh, features as well. So up the top here, we've got the first sort of run from 1967 through until 1972, which were all the Commonwealth of Australia banknotes. They'll have a Commonwealth on the banknotes. And then these notes down here from 74 through until 1991, these all have just Australia written on the banknotes. So you can see here, Commonwealth of Australia, and then down here, just Australia. So values are categorized under different condition gradings. So up here at the top of these columns right here, so uncirculated, about uncirculated, extremely fine, very fine and fine. And to work out what meets those categories, you on this in this book, you flick to the page before the $1 notes page and it looks like this and it has a decimal glossary, uh, banknote condition grading, and it has the definitions for all of those different condition gradings. And let's just jump in here. So very fine. So the VF, a circulated note showing folds and some signs of wear, paper reasonably clean and crisp. So you can read those definitions to check your banknotes to see which condition grading, condition grading it fits. And then you can have a look in the book here to find out which value um, your banknote is roughly at. So down here, these are where the more recent notes are. And to determine the value, you need to look at which year they are. So 91, 1990, 85. And to do that, you have to look at these signatures on the notes. So that's said that there's a Fraser Higgins. So if the banknote's got Fraser Higgins written on it, um, then it's a 1990 note. Or if it's got Fraser Cole on it, then that's a 1991. And the signatures on the notes are down the bottom of the note right here. So you can see this here and that there. Now it's a little bit hard to sort of make out, but what you do is you go to the page where the definitions are. So that's, a, again, it's a few pages before, before the $1 notes page, and it has all the signatures that have appeared on the banknotes over the years. And you've got to match up those signatures with the signatures in here. Now I know from experience that that is a Knight Wheeler banknote. So if I go back to the $5 notes page and I have a look for Knight Wheeler, we are going to be up in here. So Knight Wheeler, Knight Wheeler. So it's a 1976 note, that one right there. So for this banknote right here, I know this one's in perfect condition. It's in uncirculated condition. So I'm going to be looking at this column on this side of the book. And this note is a Knight Wheeler, but there's a few different uh, ones in this under Knight Wheeler. So here we go, Knight Wheeler Gothic Serial, Knight Wheeler Gothic Serial, or Knight Wheeler OCRB. Now again, that's about this serial number font. So we go back a couple of pages, and this is the serial numbering and the font. So the Gothic Serial fonts look like this, and the OCRB serial fonts look like this. Now I know with this banknote here that that is an OCRB serial font. It's not the um, the Gothic because the nines and the sixes are a really good giveaway. The nines like this come down on a diagonal and the sixes go up on a diagonal. Whereas the the Gothic uh, nines have a nice little loop like that there, loop there, and the threes are a bit loopy too. So that's Gothic. And that means this note is an OCRB. So if I come back to this page right here, we'll check it out. So the OCRB, now it's not a first prefix and the first prefix of these notes will have an NVD, which are the letters before the serial number. This has an NVH and it's not the last prefix, which is the NYG. So it doesn't have NYG, so it's neither of those two, which means it fits into this category through here of these notes right there. And you can see there at the end of the column, uncirculated $80 is the book value uh, 
for this particular banknote in this condition. So this is just a guide, this book here, uh, for values, but it's a good it's a good place to start with um, valuing your banknotes. Let's have a look at another note that I've got right here. So I've got this one here, also in uncirculated condition. This is a Johnston Fraser banknote. So the Johnston Frasers are the more recent ones down here. So, oh, wait a second, where are we? Here we go, Johnston Fraser. Now these can be Gothic or OCRB again. So that one there is an OCRB, that one right there. So that's $45 in perfect condition, that particular banknote right here. And to round out the values, just covering some of these really high values you see through here, 70,000, 47,500, 30,000, 23,000. Those notes there are generally star notes. They see here got first star, last star, first star, last star. Now the star notes are notes that have had a printing error. When they're printing them, they had an error and they have to replace them. So what they did was they would put a little star at the start of the serial number to show that it was a replacement note. Now there's hardly any of those sort of around, I suppose. Now I'm assuming that all of these notes are pretty much spoken for in people's very fine collections, but that's why some of those notes are really, really valuable because there's probably only one of those probably in existence, um, and that's why the values are up really, really high. These banknotes have a couple of security features on the note, so I'll flick a little light behind it and you'll see. Here we go, we've got the security thread. That's a metal security thread threaded through the note, little metal strip, and also here we've got James Cook, Captain Cook in the background, which is a water, um, which a watermark feature in that white window of the note. Who's on the $5 paper banknotes and why? We've got this book here, Notable Australians, Historical Figures Portrayed on Australian Banknotes. So this was put out by the Reserve Bank of Australia. So if you want to get your hands on this, then try and search that up here. And this is the $5 notes. And on this side of the banknote, we'll start here and then we'll go to the other side. So we've got Joseph Banks. Joseph Banks, 1743 to 1820. Interest in the study of botany began in his childhood and developed during his years at the University of Oxford. Instead of making the grand tour of Italy favoured by young English gentlemen, Banks joined James Cook's expedition to the South Pacific on HMS Endeavour when he was 25. His fascination with natural history was enriched by the discovery of species unknown to Europeans especially during the ship's survey of Australia's east coast. On the Endeavour's landing at Botany Bay, Banks collected so many botanical specimens that they covered one of the ship's sails spread on the shore. A selection of Australian flora, including its namesake species, the Banksia, appeared in the banknotes background. In his journal of the expedition, Banks recorded his encounters with Australia's unique species of animals, including his first sighting of a kangaroo. In gathering plants today, I myself had the good fortune to see the beast so much talked of though, but imperfectly, he was not only like a grey hound in side, size and running, but he had a long tail, as long as a grey hound's, but to liken him Two, I could not tell. Nothing certainly that I have seen at all resembles him. Banks' interest and involvement in New South Wales continued for the rest of his life. He supported the idea of founding a British colony, and from his house in London's Soho Square, he advised many of those engaged in its European settlement and exploration, including Arthur Philip and Matthew Flinders. And here we go. So this is the image of the banknote and we've got, must have a Banks here in this uh, part here. And this is a portrait of Joseph Banks that was probably used to help guide what appears on the banknote right there. And on this side of the note, we've got Caroline Chisholm. So let's take a little bit of a look at some information about her life and background. Caroline Chisholm, the social reformer and philanthropist, Caroline Chisholm, 1808 to 1877, was the first woman other than Queen Elizabeth II to be portrayed on an Australian banknote. Chisholm first arrived in New South Wales in 1838 and worked to create suitable employment and accommodation for emigrants, especially families and young, unmarried women. 
In her essay, Female Immigration Considered, she commented that the advantages held out to young people in this country are of a more desirable nature than that than can be found at home, if the colonists will only unite and afford them the necessary protection on their arrival. Chisholm promoted immigration to Australia as an opportunity to relieve poverty and unemployment, with optimistic publications such as Comfort for the Poor, Meet Three Times a Day, Voluntary Information from the People of New South Wales, collected in that colony by Mrs Chisholm in 1845-46. to Charles Dickens supported Chisholm's views of emigration and published letters from emigrants in his periodical household words, aspects of her life are thought to have influenced the character of Mrs. Jellyby in Dickens' novel Bleak House, 1852-53. Caroline Chisholm became renowned throughout England for her work. In the Royal Academy exhibition in 1852, she was portrayed by Angelo Colin Hayter with a map of Australia in the background. Hayter's portrait portrait was the basis for her representation on the banknote. It was combined with the scene of the rocks, one of the first areas of Sydney experienced by immigrants. So this is the scene right here. So Caroline Chisholm, the rocks, ship coming in. And this is the portrait of Caroline Chisholm right here that was used to represent her on the banknote. And here's a folder with some of my uh, $5 paper banknotes. So I've got a Commonwealth of Australia, a Coombs Randall right here. Pretty rough condition, but I'll take it. And then we've got uh, we've got a Johnston Fraser. This one's interesting. It's got an, a triple zero in the serial number, which I find interesting myself. Then we've got a 1985 Gothic Uncirculated, $85 condition right here. Then we have down here a Johnston Fraser. This one's got triple nine, triple nine, four, nine, three. So that's an interesting serial number. Let's flip the page. Got a few more here. Fraser Higgins, Fraser Cole, and then a few more pages down. Some of these are the polymer banknotes, and we'll get to a video on those at some stage. Um, and then I've got a few consecutive serial numbers right here. So 68, 69, and 70. So in perfect condition, those ones there are valued at $80 each. But um, this is part of my collection, and I like to use folders like this. This is a lighthouse folder it doesn't sort of it have an emblem on it i don't think but um got lots of banknotes in here it's got plenty of storage i think oh i don't know how many slots it's got but i like it because i can keep so many banknotes in one location so yes five dollar banknotes a great banknote to collect and have in your collection if you can um, and you can pick it up on sites like you can buy them from people on ebay there's auction houses Pick them up on social media. Coin dealers will most likely have them for sale as well. So there's lots of different options there. I've actually got a few different options available for sale as well. I've got 1976 and 1985 banknotes in perfect condition, $5 notes. So reach out to me if you are interested in those. Um, and if you've got any questions or further information about these banknotes, put them in the comments and uh, we'll go from there. All right, have a great day.